People's least favorite candy flavor is easily banana. Mm. Trailing leagues ahead people who don't like grape, cherry, or whatever else wrong flavor. People hate banana flavoring so much that when I tried to go to the store to buy banana candy for this video, I couldn't find a single one. They didn't even have banana Laffy Taffy. No one likes it. I personally like banana flavored candy. I love bananas. I have a banana every single morning in my fruit bowl and is always my go-to safe food when I'm traveling. Bananas are extremely special to me and I'm here to get to the bottom of what happened. Because it's not just that the factories like messed up the flavor or the flavor scientist did a bad job because they have no taste. There's a scientific reason why bananas taste like that. The story of banana flavoring is not a linear one, and the journey I will take you on will be long and unforgiving. So strap in and let's get to the bottom of why banana flavoring tastes so bad. You might think bananas have been around since the beginning of time by the gods, but they were discovered by Alexander the Great in 327 BC when he invaded India. We're gonna see a lot of these themes throughout the video, okay? So fast forward through time and now the West is like, whoa, bananas! And we get to the year 1876, when the banana fruit was introduced to American consumers at the Philadelphia Centennial, which was basically a world's fair to show off how cool America is after 100 years of independence. However, the formula for banana flavoring was invented a whole decade before this, in the 1850s and 60s. So how could this be? How could Americans taste banana candy before bananas themselves? Themselves. Nadia Berenstein, a flavor historian, while breaking down the history of synthetic flavors, says that in the early days of synthetic flavor profiling, they weren't doing the analysis of fruits due to technological shortcomings. It just wasn't possible. Dude. What? So instead of getting into the weeds of banana flavoring, scientists just went for a taste that tasted fruity. They said, yep, that's good enough for me. Then they applied this fruity taste to numerous fruity candies. I wish the banana flavoring tasted more like the food in Love and Pies, the sponsor of today's video. Though I haven't actually tasted the food because it's on a screen and it's not real, but it looks good. Love and Pies is a merge mystery game where Amelia's mom's cafe was suddenly burned down and she was nowhere to be seen. Amelia must uncover the mystery and dispel the town's rumor that her mom burns down the cafe on purpose for insurance money. Don't worry, girl. We know you're innocent, don't you worry. While you get to rebuild and decorate the cafe, I'm going for a cozy cottagecore Pinterest TikTok girl that pays $7 for a coffee aesthetic. You can also pretend that you actually have an interesting love life as you rekindle romance with your old high school sweetheart, Joe. And merge food and things to fulfill customer orders and make money. I've been playing Love and Pies at the gym because only God can judge me on that elliptical. Listen, okay, some of you are watching reality TV on the treadmill. I'm playing Love and Pies. We are not the same. New story content is released regularly along with events and competitions to get cool items in game. Love and Pies is free to download, so make sure you use my link to download it below. Thank you guys for using the links in my descriptions. It helps the channel a ton. And thank you to Love and Pies for sponsoring this video. And now back to banana. So stick with me here. To look at the journey of banana flavoring, Berenstein says we actually have to look at pears. Yup, don't worry, I was lost too. When a British person smelled isoamyl acetate, a compound often used in artificial flavoring, they associated this fruity flavoring with the jargonelle pear because that was the popular fruit in the region. But since Americans weren't as familiar with the jargonelle pear, they didn't jump to the same conclusion, leaving the chemical manufacturers to market the flavoring as banana instead. But this flavoring doesn't taste anything like banana, right? wrong. Actually, this flavoring is very similar to banana, but to understand why, we need to take a walk down memory lane. Colonizer memory lane, to be exact. I told you this would be a recurring theme. <laughs> That's right, bananas have a dark side, and I'm not just talking about the weird mushy spot that some of you are too afraid to eat. Bananas reached the Americas in the early 1500s, although they were cultivated in Asia before Jesus times. But you might be saying, Gabby, I thought they got here in 1876. That's for like American consumers, but like other types of bananas that, you know, 
were like kind of luxurious and not that edible got here around the 1500s. Okay, it's we're it, just stick with me here. So once in the Americas, bananas were cultivated on huge slave-based plantations. However, these bananas looked nothing like the ones that we know today. They were full of seeds and tough and hard to peel. Not the makings of a minion-friendly snack, if you ask me. <laughs> Actually, no seeds in bananas that exist today are capable of growing into a banana plant, as their seeds have been genetically modified to be tiny and infertile. You know those tiny black spots that you see inside of bananas? Those are the tiny seeds full of dead dreams. Bananas today are grown from clippings of other banana plants. In the 1800s, captains from America, not to be confused with Captain America or Captain Falcon, went to the Caribbean in search of new crops, where they purchased the Gros Michel banana from Afro-Caribbean farmers in Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, which is just a type of banana, just like how plantains are a type of banana, the Gros Michel banana is a type of banana. What made the Gros Michel banana so popular was its thick skin and ability to grow in large bunches. By the end of the 1800s, bananas were a huge hit. They were affordable, exotic, and endorsed by medical professionals and minions alike. But what's that? Ring ring banana phone? Greedy corporations are calling. Once US corporations saw how successful bananas were, they wanted to be able to grow their own in the US. They wanted a piece of the pie. Or I guess in this scenario, a pull of the peel. Except they didn't grow their own in the US. <laughs> because why do that when you can just grow them in Central America? <laughs> Recurring themes. In order to secure Central American farmland, US businessmen bribed and coerced political officials in Central America. They even funded coups to ensure that they had allies in power. By the 1930s, United Fruit Company, now known as Chiquita, you might know Chiquita from Chiquita Bananas, dominated the banana industry. Owning over 40% of Guatemala's arable land, which means land that is suitable for farming, I had to Google it too. United Fruit cleared rainforests all across Central and South America to build plantations, railroads, and towns for their workers. And since the wages were relatively higher than the ones available to them, workers migrated to these banana towns, creating a real-life Minions situation. I mean, it kind of is like Minions if you think about it. Gru was definitely not paying those little guys a fair wage. They were forced into crowded living spaces and they can't leave. Anyways, before this gets too political, let's get back to the actual bananas themselves. Though I do think this context was important. <laughs> the common thread between all these plantations was the type of banana. They all only grew, grew, grow Michelle bananas in densely packed plots of land. And the lack of biodiversity across the board made these plantations a spawning ground for disease which ultimately led to the demise of the Gros Michel banana, RIP. And that brings us to the Panama disease, a fungus that affected all the Gros Michel plants, spread rapidly from farm to farm on workers' boots, railroads, and steamships in the 1910s, first in Panama and then to the rest of Central America, which also means all the bananas that we had over here in the US. In a race against the disease, companies abandoned plantations across Central America, leaving thousands Thousands of workers unemployed. They abandoned entire ecosystems that they themselves destroyed. Like in Despicable Me when Gru and freezes a dude and then just leaves him there. He's definitely dead. After World War II, the dictatorships that had once worked with the fruit companies yielded their power to democracies. These democracies passed land reforms, attempting to purchase land back from the United Fruit Company and then redistribute that land to landless farmers, like a Gru that had lost his minions. Just like how I would buy back Gru's house and redistribute it to the Minions if I were the Minister of Minions, yes I'm still on this, Justice for Minions. United Fruit was furious at this because they wanted their widow monies and reported to the US government that these farmers and governments were trying to create a communist regime. Dude, like United Fruit is that kid in class that just always reminds the teacher to collect the homework like right before the bell's gonna ring. So then the American CIA decided to orchestrate the overthrow of the democratically elected Guatemalan government in 1954. That's right, the United States Central Intelligence Agency conducted targeted overthrows of entire governments over bananas.
Thousands of United Fruit workers went on strike until the company decided to agree on a workers' union, you know, because of what happened. <laughs> After this, the United Fruit Company abandoned the Gros Michel species of banana, switching to the Panama disease resistant Cavendish banana in the 1960s, which is the banana that we see today. Today, bananas are not as vital to Central American economics as they used to be. United Fruit has rebranded to Chiquita and lost their stranglehold on the area. However, Chiquita still grows their bananas in Central America. I think on that reclaimed land from the coups in the 1950s. But that's not to say that banana farming today is all bananas and cream. Cavendish bananas require frequent application of pesticides, resulting in hazardous work environments for farmers, as well as detrimenting the land. And with farms lacking biodiversity again, it's only a matter of time before a new epidemic hits the banana farms, which means that scientists are working in the background to develop an even newer, more disease-resistant type of banana. But I don't know about that. I, that's not what this video is about, because it's about the banana flavoring in candy! We've arrived, we've gone through so many stops, but now we've arrived today at at what, what the f what does this have to do with the candy? A lot, actually. Remember our old friend, the isoamyl acetate? The pear flavoring turned banana? Well, the compound isoamyl acetate is actually found in the Gros Michel banana. Way more so than the Cavendish banana. And the Gros Michel banana is what they were basing the flavoring off of. So when you're eating a banana flavored candy and you go, ah, yucky, <laughs> you are actually time traveling to a banana that doesn't exist anymore. Because we also haven't updated the flavor profile. I don't know why we haven't updated that, but you know, that's why. <laughs> you can thank the CIA, Fungus, and Chiquita for for ruining bananas, and you can thank me and Sid for investigating the history of banana flavor. So thank you for watching this abridged version of the history of bananas. I know I'm going to miss a lot of details and I'm gonna get like historians in the comments correcting me on various small things. So just remember, I'm just a YouTuber and this is just entertainment. I try to get all the facts as best I can and that's just how it is. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at It's Gabby Bell and subscribe if you'd like to be my next caller on the banana phone, uh, where we're doing a, a special game show where you have to guess, uh, you have to taste, uh, subscribe. Boop, boop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. I've got this feeling so appealing for us to get together and sing, sing. Ring, 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 banana phone. Ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, banana phone. It grows in bunches. I've got my hunches. It's the best. Beats the rest. Cellular, modular, interactive, modular. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. I'm done. That's that's it. <laughs>